It was buried in the sands of Egypt for a million gazillion years. We sought to unlock its secret. He says it's important. It has to do with the Stargate. Instead, we released a podcast? Join them as they rediscover the greatness that is Stargate SG-1. Get into gate. That just has a nice ring to it. Oh, thanks, Thank you, Jack. Jack. <laughs> now, <laughs> I made that trailer early 2016 before we even started the podcast. It's kind of like a wet the whistle, try and get us into doing this. Jesus. <laughs> it what may year? sound familiar because we did use it for it four years ago. one of the Origins trailers. Um, which inspired us, but the thing that inspired me to do <laughs> inspired me to do that intro. Yeah, right. Um, as soon as as soon as you pop the DVD, and if you have the old school DVD, or I don't know if it happens for you, Reese, even with the new ones. Yeah, straight away. You get this awesome and yet terrible DVD promotion. Mm. Yeah. It's awesome because it's Stargate. It looks amazing, but terrible because whoever wrote it had no freaking clue what the hell they were talking about. Yeah, factually incorrect. Yeah. So this is how it starts, anyway. It was buried in the sands of Egypt for a thousand centuries. Thousand centuries. Thousand centuries. So well, uh, jump onto conversion.com. <laughs> hundred thousand years. It's hundred thousand years. Yeah. Oh, Which Jesus. if it was, you know, buried under the ice of, of Antarctica, might yeah, be sure. accurate. Absolutely. Mm. But it was buried in the ice of Antarctica for several million years. Mm. Yeah. Sands of Egypt though, not so no. much. Three thousand BC. Mm. 3000 BC was when the, the people. Yeah, that was 100,000 years ago, mate. Yeah. Carry maybe, the one. B, no, you're right, actually. Maybe you, to to, maybe you need to go to ultraconversion.com. Ultra. Yeah. <laughs> BC is before Ultra. Camulus. Before Camuli. Yeah. Ooh. Camul. Yeah. Multiple one, of One oh, Camulus, Camulus, many Camuli. Multiple. Yeah. <laughs> Checks out. God, yeah. Hello, Australia. I'm Amanda Tapping. Oh, uh, shoot. Sorry. Previously, on the last seven seasons of... Seven? Jeez, is that right? Mm. I mean, really? Seven years of Stargate? Syndication. Shouldn't we get a cake or something? Rich. It's top of cake. Yes, cake. Get oh. into gate. Absolutely. Welcome back. Season 8, Episode 1. You might notice... That it's me, Reese, talking here, and it's not because Mitch isn't here, because he is. Uh, he's chasing young boys around the studio. <laughs> that sounds weird. Sounds weird, no, but no, he's got no, his Asian. kids here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're talking New Order. We're back with season s- eight. <laughs> season eight. Sexy eight, I was going to say. <laughs> sexy it's season so sexy. Eight. Sexy season eight. New Order pop, pop New Order port one and two. What, what? what the <laughs> f- did you just say? <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of port, I said. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Uh, look, uh, we're, we're going to tell you what's going on here. Season 8, we're drinking Mitch, every episode, thank guys. God you're we're back. getting right into the port, and shut, we're just going to keep shut, drinking shut, as we go <laughs> and just see how long these podcasts get and how wild they get. Yeah, and get fucked. I don't know. Wrong, yeah, wrong, wrong. Wrong. We start off as getting a gate, and we end as the Gibson Brothers <laughs> plus two. That's what happens in season 8. That's usually what happens in the podcast. Absolutely, it does. <laughs> plus two, please. The Descent into Madness is the subtitle of that podcast. We are talking New Order for episode 154 of Get Into Gates. And this is the last time that we're talking about just Stargate SG-1. Because next week, chronologically, we're getting into Stargate Atlantis. Wow, and then, Reese isn't the only newbie on the show. Little old Mitchie over here. I've seen half of Stargate SG One's pilot, and that was about mm, sixteen years ago. So uh, I'm looking forward. I would have said Atlantis, not SG One. Is that what I said? Mm. Okay, Atlantis. <laughs> what you said? It's how much he loves Atlantis. Jesus, <laughs> just wants Doesn't it to be a look. I've avoided it for nearly two decades, guys. Okay, yeah. so finally we're going to get right SG1 back into 2. it. SG One Two well, we'll see how that yeah. goes. <laughs> but right now, we are talking Stargate SG-1, the uh, double episode uh, premiere of Season 8, New Order. And as we do each and every week, we'll get into what the old synopsis reads and then throw it over to Reese and see what he thought of it for the first time. When Carter and Tilk fly to the Asgard world of Hala in hopes of finding a way to revive O'Neill, they are attacked by replicators who take Carter prisoner. Meanwhile, Dr. Weir and Daniel Jackson attempt to negotiate a treaty with the Gord system lords who wish to unite against a common enemy. Number two, 
The Gould send a mothership to Earth demanding that it prove its superior defences as Dr. Weir applies her most expert diplomatic tactics. Daniel and the still unconscious body of Colonel O'Neill are unexpectedly beamed aboard Thor's ship where Thor tries to access the what? knowledge of the ancients. <laughs> what? He's wrecked him. I think <laughs> this is such he's an odd... Probe. He's, he's going to probe him. him. You know, if wow. we... <laughs> Like we said, it's getting sexual in season eight. <laughs> oh, yes. What's going to make you watch this episode? <laughs> Jack's <laughs> unconscious body getting beamed up. Yeah, I want to watch that. I thought you learned all you need to from probing. No, 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 no. Send him up. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead. Deader the better. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> well, last season, Osiris was probing yeah. Daniel Jackson while he was asleep. So yeah, yeah. why not share the love? Yeah, aliens. Yeah. Guess enough of the rectums. We get it. Like, just <laughs> yeah. stay Hey, away. speak for yourself, mate. I thought Loki <laughs> did a real good number on O'Neill's rectum before. Absolutely. Mm. Rectum, Took years off his life. <laughs> Took years of his life. <laughs> so, yeah. Reese, uh, here we are, season eight. Um, it ended in spectacular fashion, oh. season seven, two weeks ago on the podcast. You loved it. Last week, we concluded it was far and away our favorite episode of season seven. Season eight kicks off, new order. I mean, the program's just blown up, hasn't it? I mean, I really love this episode. There was so much packed into this. I think the biggest question, though, is what the f*** is with Tilk's hair? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is weird. Yeah. That is super it's odd, weird. Isn't it? And the worst part is uh, they, they filmed like the first four episodes out of order. So his hair is just all over the place in terms of growth and style. Like right. for the next three or four, it's yeah. Now I'm happy weird. to talk about hairstyles. Oh, here you go. I was going to say <laughs> hair chat again. Well, now I that mean, it's Tilk, <laughs> I'm glad you did because then we get to episode two of uh, this two parter, and we get virtual reality. Um, Carter hair because she's got long hair because that's what yeah. the replicator oh, goes. Oh, mate, uh, those hair extensions wigs. are some of yeah. the worst things I've ever seen. You can seen. see her short hair on top. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't even the same color. It looked like a mullet because they yeah. left her normal short fringe <laughs> at the front. It's well, a- she was living on a farm. <laughs> with Pete, yeah, yeah, mullet yeah, wouldn't have gone astray. She'd be, with, yeah, should have at least had a ponytail. I, think. I feel like that would have saved <laughs> yeah. things. That would have saved yeah. it a little bit. Yeah, mm, that's yeah. um, yeah, those hair extensions were god awful. Now, am I remembering incorrectly? And I probably am because I, I I wanted to watch the the opening credits because I'm interested to see whether they change them for the first episode or they leave it there so you answer a few questions and whatever and they don't spoil anything. Did they actually show Teal'c with hair in the opening credits of episode one here for New Order? I don't know. Or... I normally skip oh, past yeah. them. I'm trying to think of where, where I got because I was at nearly as surprised as you, Reese, because I knew that was coming eventually, but yeah. it's just bang, he's got hair, and I, I love that <laughs> O'Neill gets to ask, like, Teal'c. What's with the hair? the hair twice? Like he listens to galaxy changing information. He goes, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> what's with the hair? And like I'm like, tell us what's happening. Yeah. Man. I You've love been that bald that's... for seven years. I love you, bald. The All explanation is that there's no explanation. Yeah, yeah I like but it. they address it, but they don't explain it. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's so good. I like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just open don't up my my uh, fantastic Stan app that I've got on my phone. Oh, great, great people. Great people. Oh, they want to sponsor the show. The show. In Australia, that's the where we stream <laughs> Stargate SG1. He's got bald hair. they still got the old show. Oh, oh, he oh he's got a hair. Got a hair. Like, got that hair seems like a one. weird mm. tease to do. in Because at that stage, had we seen Teal'c? Like, no. no, the opening scene was just um, Daniel people, and Weir. Don't blow people's minds like that in the opening yeah. credits. We're not ready yeah. for that shit. Yeah, no one looks the opening I mean, to me, it just shows how much time has passed between the end of season seven and season eight. Yeah. yeah. How, how long do you reckon it has passed? Did they say? Was it a week? Did Daniel say it's been a week? He's been, been frozen a, for seven days? or I thought it had been a couple of months. Yeah, I, I figured it had been a couple of months. Um, right. Enough for Tilk's hair to grow and then for him <laughs> yeah. to get a oh, she buzz said cut. Seven, she said seven days. That was the Antarctica Treaty or something. There are mm. negotiations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because I suppose yeah, there would have been a lot of that stuff going on before they could set up the, the stuff. Yeah. And well, so, speaking of um, Tilk and his hair... And uh, we might remember the start of last season, we gave Reese a little gift in the form of a, of a Jonas action figure. Mm. And I spoke about how I couldn't get it on its own. I had to buy it as a lot. And uh, the, other, the other figures that came with it were a bit of a spoiler. Well, there you go, Reese. Oh. Crack that one open. Another dildo. <laughs> From Telstra. Well, it couldn't fit in the box of shame. Oh, stop it. It's an action figure of Tilk with hair. I mean, jeez, that's sick. I'm excited that it's Tilk. I mean, it looks scent that he's got hair. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got underneath that a little tub. 
of dark paint that you yeah. can just uh, and Vaseline to do what Absolutely. you want with it. Yeah. Oh, sick. So oh, the big shoulder cannon along with it. It comes with a shoulder cannon and, and an ARG. There's an ARG floating in there as well. Sure is. I don't think he ever wields this, does he? No. You'll see. I think it, it may not have come with oh, I mean, yeah. with him. It was Obviously just, in um, this episode. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's, that's f- cool. <laughs> And then Phone another character who uh, who had a big hair change as well, Dr. Weir. Cool. I thought you were going to say Bit of a fifth. change. <laughs> that perm is amazing. She shaved her rug. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes, indeed. Stopped, <laughs> stopped dying and got a bit of plastic surgery, changed her face a little bit, changed her accent. And they had a, they had a touch of that, like... To the audience, this is the actress that will be playing Doctor Weir now, because like she yeah. walked in and Daniel's like, "Oh, Doctor Weir," and she's like, "Please call me Elizabeth," mm. which I'm pretty sure she yeah. said to him in Lost City. Yeah, she said the exact same thing to him in Lost City. Yeah. It's like, we, we've covered this, but you need to tell the audience yeah. that a new actress is uh, is playing the character. They're like, should we get a blonde woman at least to play? Nah, yeah. nah. completely different. Nah. <laughs> should we make Tori Higgins dye her hair? Nah. nah. Nah, no, we'll no. just do it this way. Push on, guys. But I absolutely love this Weir. I love Tori Higginson's Weir. I think How? she's such a big imp- <laughs> no, right. such a big improvement for me on so Jessica gross. Steen. So unsure of herself. See, I find her so much more confident than than the Jessica Steen version of Weir that we saw in Lost City. I find this Weir confident in being wrong about everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I like that that she's I'm not like- shy saying that I know jack shit. So I wouldn't I wouldn't mind as much if she wasn't in charge. But the fact yeah. that she's in charge and she doesn't know about everything, like well, that's... She's a real handbrake. Well, see, I like that. Have a listen to this. This is something I like about it. Look, I'm not afraid to admit that I need help. So what can you tell me? The High Council of the System Lords is a rather flimsy coalition of the most powerful ghouls in the galaxy who only cooperate when it suits them. All right. I assume I can't just open the iris and let the representatives just walk through. She no, sounds so bored. A bad idea. We should... <laughs> Get them to meet us at a neutral location, preferably a planet of our choosing. Send a team, check them out, make sure they're unarmed, and then escort them back. Good. Duh. Send a message. So that's what I like about that is at the start, she's like, oh, look, I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm openly saying I need help. I'm going to need some advice. Give me information. From an archaeologist. But then, <laughs> well, no, like, he knows no, about the Goa <laughs> yeah. So then at the end, yeah. she still kind of manages to keep her authority about it by going, okay, send the message. So mm. she's like, I'm going to take your, your your input and take your advice. But at the end, she's like, you send the message. Daniel's like, I don't do like, that keeps. shit. She's, she's pretty much said, Daniel, well, do everything and I'll take the credit. Now, let's yeah. be honest, Thanks, though. Mate. If she decided something differently, Daniel would tell her that he knew how to do it better. So at least she's cut out. He does like, know how to do it better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I mean. Like, But if she made her decision, Daniel, right. as we've known him for seven years, he would go, I don't know, no, 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 no. As he does, <laughs> Jack, 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 Jack. he can't say just, Jack, just Jack, one Jack, second. Jack, 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 Jack. <laughs> he can't do that anymore. So, like, at least she's coming in and go, "Hey, look, you dealt with these guys before." And like, yeah, he, he is an archaeologist, but like, he is a consultant to her on many levels. So, I, I appreciated that. It did get me a little bit where they come to her during the episode. They're at the briefing room. Like, look, uh, we want to go and see, you know, the Asgard. We want to go and do all these things that will help revive Jack. And like, she's like, "I, I can't." Okay, like, nah. a lot of this stuff we've got to. I'm sorry, like that will have to wait, or that can't happen at all. Yada yada yada. Now I've made my decision. My answer is no. I'm Next sorry. Minute, she and goes, then in the second episode, yeah. where they're like, they've got the gould coming, and they're really worried. And she goes in. She's like, says to the same people, says to Daniel, you know what, we might bloody need. We might need to revive Jack. <laughs> <laughs> nearly dead. If only, one, if only someone had told you six weeks ago. Oh, hang on. Sorry, sorry. It wasn't worth it when we just wanted to just, like save his life and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But now that you need to show off your new toy down in Antarctica, it's like, well, yeah. yeah, we might need to unfreeze that bloke. She's Getting like, out of there. I, I can't send anyone on, anyone on this rescue mission. Like, that's literally half our missions. You've said you've read the reports. Like, half our missions yeah. are rescue missions. Yeah. But, like, uh, that whole idea that... Um, the SGC has to shut down because of Antarctica. Like what? Like the president didn't want any uh, to save face or something yeah. was the excuse. So gate activity shut down. It's like, but just send us there. Mm. Like, just don't tell anyone. Don't tell the Chinese. They didn't know about it until like seven years into it when we told them. Mm. Well, so I'm I- pretty sure the most like secure uh, facility, secret facility, can just have one wormhole open and it's. Fine. Yeah. yeah, and I think oh well, I think if Hammond was still in charge, he'd make that happen. He'd find yeah, a way to sure. work around it. Mm. But because Weir is such a new, she's no idea new, what she's doing. Yeah, she doesn't yeah. know what's going on. She doesn't know these people. She doesn't 
you know, completely trust them and all that kind of stuff. She's not willing to bend the rules for them. Whereas, you know, Hammond would just be like, okay, cool, I'm going to turn my back while you guys activate the Stargate and away you go. Mm. Mm. So Obviously, um, that was just a, a, a writing... Uh, plot that they decided to put in there so they can use the ship and go and go to uh, the the Asgard homeworld or whatever it was, where the um, yeah. Where yeah the time dilation well, device guess, was for the replicators. I guess that's the other thing too is we wouldn't have been able to use the Stargate to get to the Asgard homeworld because that'd be an eight um, Chevron eight lock. Chevron address. Yeah, they could have just gone to power to so. Samaria. Or yeah, Red they'd Sky have to go planet. somewhere like that to yeah. um, to try and get in contact with them. Yeah. And so the, the talking about the nations and stuff, it's grown because when we had the Supreme Commander, it yeah. was what, was there six nations? Was there or yeah, it was the like US us, and six us more? plus five? Us plus five, I yeah. Say. Um, By us, we mean America. Yeah, of course, we mean America. <laughs> us the good the, guys. Us <laughs> is the us is the yeah, as the first nation around. Now it's eleven. They said there are eleven others. So is it the US plus eleven others or eleven in total? Either way, yeah. there are more. That mm. know about the the Stargate based on what happened. Yeah, probably uh, the in NATO. Antarctica. Well, there's more than that in NATO, isn't there? I think yeah. NATO's 25 or something. And that's they, the they thing when the... they're talking about the Antarctic negotiations. I think Australia holds a huge sliver of the Arctic mm. zone. I believe if you yeah. look at the map of the Antarctic, they split it up into a pie chart. So they'd almost have to tell our. Government, oh, that's what I was. I was wondering because they didn't name the yeah. new five. Did they no, all? No, and no. I'm like, is Australia in there? Or if not, mm. how did we not? know about what mm. was going on there. Because the people so keep close. an eye out down there is Tasmania. They have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and each other. Because <laughs> they're cousins. That's what I'm getting They're all at. cousins. <laughs> shout out Obviously, Holly- I'm joking. I was going to say, shout out to Holly Corbett. <laughs> down in, down Got family life. down there. My cousins yeah. live yeah. there. His cousins live there. He knows. Slash brother. He- yeah. <laughs> Slash husband. <laughs> Slash lover. Yeah. <laughs> Love her. God, <laughs> God, I hate that word. Uh, apparently, um, apparently, the first uh, draft of this script uh, they didn't actually include. We they actually had oh, good. They keep had, it. They, <laughs> <laughs> Who rewrote this? Cooper. <laughs> Cooper. They had uh, Woolsey in charge, so he was actually you oh, know, in God. charge. Oh no, no. Thank God no. for it. Yeah. yeah. Thank God. <laughs> so, oh, speak too no. soon. I think they realised that they <laughs> once they decided to use her for the spin-off, they were like, okay, well, um, let's bring her in for this episode and give her a little bit more, a little bit more meat. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think Woolsey would have been a very weird, given that we like when we when we finished in Lost City, we was still in charge of the SGC. So we were, we were, we were Doctor Weir. Why were we were? Doctor Weir. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Weir was still in charge. Weir was still in charge. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Just a little weird joke there for you. Actually, thinking back to the way that Lost City ended, the way they were talking about they, you know, they, why they have to be okay and 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 do everything that the other nations are, you know, that they're signing off on. It's a big, it's a team now. They're talking about the the the, the line. The excuse to the public was that it was a media shower, and they're like, we need to keep a lid on this as long as we can <laughs> yeah. because that's only going to fly so far. And I'm like, yeah. three okay, meteors cool. that took out three battleships. That's what I'm saying. Coincidentally, right? so like you can have like some Joe Blow in the middle of the country with a telescope that goes, oh, there was some action going on, like there was things in the sky in yeah. deep space. And you go, oh, just a meteor shower. Okay, sweet, we can hide that. But it looked like you... the meteors were going up. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but how do you hide, like Bree said, three battleships that got ripped apart? How many thousand people? Yeah. How many people are yeah. on those ships? And all, what, do you go back to their families? and go, It's not like, oh, they died in a training accident. Their ships blew the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. And you go back, oh, meteor shower. It's like, right, and it just hit those three ships? Yeah. Like, yeah. Remember back in uh, Failsafe when there was that extinction-level asteroid that we didn't see, but mm. some guy in a Winnebago sitting next to a, like, <laughs> yeah. spotted it before yeah. anyone else yeah. did? Yeah. Yeah. I just thought, that's, a, that's a, I mean, they say they know it's a flimsy excuse. I get that, but... Yeah, the the tinfoil hats looking a lot less tinfoil hatty when stuff like that happens, aren't they? I felt their plan to grab the Asgard's attention was a bit flimsy. Like, let's just go, let's just take our only good ship, Mm. go over there, and we'll just like wave our hands in the air and see if Thor can see us. (laughs) We'll probably die, but it's worth a shot. Like I, I don't think waving down the Asgard like that. Obviously, it worked, but <laughs> <laughs> but like just well, she, really... she knew that the Asgard were monitoring the planet. She didn't know that it was a black hole now. Mm. So she's like, oh, there has to be an Asgard ship. We can't contact them through our regular means. So let's. Oh, that's our only she, shot. Did she say that? Did she? Because she yeah, said like... we you haven't been responding to our messages 
and he says something about the time dilation mm. would have affected that. And she's uh, like, oh, fair enough. And then Tilk's, she goes, I understand. And he goes, it's easy for some. I'm like, yeah. Tilk, you're smarter than that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so maybe <laughs> it's like... It's yeah. an O'Neill line. It's pretty standard, yeah. <laughs> maybe we were like contacting him through like Samaria and Red Sky and yeah. leaving a message with the Asgard in charge being like, okay, we'll send a text to Thor. But he's not getting He'll get right back to you guys. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So right. urgent. Yeah. He's even, stupid Tari. <laughs> even as an audience member, like we've been so angry at the Asgard because there's been so much shit going on in the second half of season seven. And they're like, oh, the Asgard aren't responding. And I'm like, they never respond whenever we need <laughs> yeah. this yeah. bullshit. And then we go there and he's like, oh, yeah, because there's time dilation. There's a black hole and the time dilation thing. And, you know, that. And I'm like, God damn it. That's a good excuse. <laughs> he's like, literally <laughs> just been I'm not sitting angry there. Or, for four years. Anymore. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. He's aged 50 years, and we're like, but you didn't answer the phone, mate. Yeah. Like, Sitting just... there, inside Daniel Jackson. I know. Mm. <laughs> Feet kicked up, eating yellow ones. You know, I had to do some research on that. What's that? Why did Thor name his ship the Daniel Jackson when he's over only ever seen Daniel two times in the entire series? Really? He's only spoken to him twice. Wow. That's interesting. So I've gone back here. Mate, he is Daniel Jackson. Yeah. You'd think after... Um, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. why he's not in it. Yeah. He can't, he can't talk to himself. You'd think after like he had all that the contact with Carter and she helped save their planet and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Back in, yeah. You'd think, and because I think the the implication is is the... The gen, the what was it? The Jack O'Neill ship that was destroyed was like their new replicator fighter ship. And then... What yeah. what Thor's in here is supposed to be the, like a science class vessel, supposed to be for. So they've attached that to Daniel Jackson, but I'm like, I feel like that should be the Carter. It not should the Daniel definitely Jackson. be the Carter. It's mm. just a normal ship; it's just got tiny writing all over yeah. it. Not to mention <laughs> that that Daniel's never had any um, contact with a human form replicator either. Yeah, mm. like he wasn't there in season six when this when yeah, the right. yeah, exactly. human form replicators rocked up. So yeah, I really feel like that ship so, should have been. I mean, if you go back, like he he's contact like all right, we'll go back. Thor's hammer. Daniel actually destroys Thor's hammer. So why would he name a ship after some dickhead who killed his own hammer? Mm. <laughs> Thor's chariot, which is the one, obviously, where Daniel figures it out, the the pie. Season three, two. Season mm. two. He, Thor appears to them in the, as a hologram, mm. and that's where they chat. The next one was uh, the fifth race, where it, obviously O'Neill's the only one. Mm. The next one is Fair Game, where... There, I think that's the one where they uh, Thor uh, mediates the negotiations between Earth yeah. and the Gold yeah, System laws. New Order 1.0. For the Planet Treaty. Yeah, whereas yeah. this is basically, this episode is Fair Game 2.0. Yeah, so basically uh, Thor beams into the briefing room. Jack introduces Thor to Hammond and SG-1. Daniel and Thor, uh, Thor say nothing to each other <laughs> and then Thor, be- Thor uh, beams out. So that's the only other time up until Nemesis is where... Uh, the Asgard come and bring the replicators to Earth. Daniel yeah. actually has an ap- appendectomy. So he's right. out of action. Yeah, he's out for that. I think he sees him in part two there, Small Victories, um, where Carter says, that's the second time he actually speaks to him, mm. is when Carter says, or Daniel says, you need someone dumber. That was his line. Yeah. So, and then Carter goes off on the ship with him and Daniel stays with the whole submarine yeah. thing that's going on. And, so, yeah. Yeah. And, and, Paul uh, would have spent heaps of time with Carter there. And Red Sky, obviously, they talk to the other Asgards, but it's not. Thor wasn't there mm. in that one. Mm. Revelations, uh, where the Asgard enlist SG-1 to, to help with the scientists. Yeah, Daniel was dead for that one. Daniel's dead. Prometheus, Daniel's dead. Unnatural Selection, which is a replicated one. Daniel's dead. Disclosure, Daniel's dead. So, Lost, Lost City Part 1, that's it. Yeah, but he bef- befriended Reese and got the information for the Asgard to build the yeah, mm. just Bingo. not buying it. Yeah, the thing that for me is like, all right, so Daniel in Thor's chariot, that was probably his triumphant moment for me, which is why it maybe Thor's contact. gone, wow, look at that. Mm. Yeah, it's like I feel like, yeah, any any contact that they would have had that we haven't seen wasn't important enough for us to see it. So it's like, you know, yeah. when when um, Thor rocks up to help out Hammond for Supreme Commander and all that kind of stuff, it's like maybe he went and had like a few yellow ones and a lemonade back at the SGC. Well, Daniel was dead for that one. Oh, yeah, he was too, wasn't he? That's yeah. right. When maybe we saw he, him in the picture. Maybe yeah. Thor went to Carter and said, look, I'm going to name a ship after you. And she goes, oh, can you name it after Daniel first? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he will get so shitty if it's not him. Yeah. That's yeah, actually that, the most yeah. likely scenario. <laughs> like, like Matt, he said Carter actually helped them destroy yeah. Yeah. the replicators yeah. in well, Small Victories. And that was on maybe. board the, the Jack O'Neill, right, yeah. or whatever. So, yeah. 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 like, she, that, They probably did have the conversations that, look, I don't want to presume anything. 
But if you ever want to name another ship, it just, just looks... <laughs> no one's arguing that Jack gets the first one. Okay? I mean, yeah. Daniel was pissed off that Jack got this one yeah. <laughs> first. Maybe, maybe maybe Thor was still salty because Carter came with the idea to destroy the replicators by destroying his brand new ship, the, the Jack O'Neill. Yeah. So maybe he was real salty about it and went, well, I'm just going to skip her and I'm going to name my next one Daniel Jackson. <laughs> and I haven't, yeah. I haven't even met him. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna gonna still going to name after yeah. him, so... Suck it. So yeah, it definitely should be the Carter. Oh, I spe- I've got another clip here, Mitch. I've got a clip here from Thor's chariot when, like, everyone remembers that, right? Daniel figures the whole thing out, and that's how they can make Thor's chariot. With Never Daniel seen it with Asgard. <laughs> well, listen to this. You're really hard on this one, Brendan. Love it. I have no idea what he wants us to do. There is no shame. Perhaps in more time you will have come of age. Uh, excuse me. Could Please, you... just one second. Okay. Norse ruins were ideas. They were also numbers. Three, 14, 15, nine. It's no use. It, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't mean four, anything. Five, one, nine. Oh, yes, it does. 3.14159. It's pi. It's pi. Pi. Carter. It's pi. Yes, Carter. It's, 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 Carter. That's what I said. It's pi. Yeah, Carter worked it out. Carter figured it out. He just drew the line on the circle. Yeah, he got all the credit. <laughs> oh. He ran over to the geometric shapes, barged Carter out of the way. I'm, I've got this. Jesus, mind blown. <laughs> that ship should be called the Samantha Carter. Carter, Rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, she got a promotion. I guess she kind of everything. She got promoted at the end. Oh yeah, that's true. That's well, everyone got a promotion, yeah. right? Even Walter. Walter got promoted as well. He's uh, he's now a senior master sergeant apparently. Senior master gate technician. According to his little <laughs> little patch on his side apparently. So is ha- Hammond's gone now? Is he? He is. He's been reassigned. He's the head of homeworld security. So he the oversees. Pentagon. So we never see him again. A few well, times. I mean, we're not going to say not that. Not much. So he's not. Oh, he's the head of space force before Donald Trump yeah. made yeah. space force. <laughs> yeah, right. And I know which one I'd <laughs> rather vote uniform. for. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, how's this for Hammond being class act? We haven't done it in a while, so I guess we better. Dust off the piano boys. Oh, oh shit. You did hell. not. Graham's back from holidays. Oh, Graham. I forgot about Graham. Has anyone been feeding him while we've been away? Is that- <laughs> we've paid him enough for go buy himself a meal. He's only little. And the good news is actually right across the road from where we record, there's a little woolies now, so he doesn't have to walk far. He's, oh, he, his legs can't carry him very far, so yeah. he doesn't have to go too far. All right, well, <laughs> Graham, wait, Graham, Graham, it's your time, bro. Gather round the fire. It's time for another reading. Oh, that's why he hasn't been here. There's been a fire ban in Australia. <laughs> oh, of course. Graham lit all the fires. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't work no, without tapers. He Let does not work without you. tapers. <laughs> but uh, this comes from uh, Joseph Malozzi's blog uh, via uh, the Gateworld website. Uh, Joe says, There was a point in the series when Rick was scaling down his appearances, resulting in quite a challenge for the writing department. I remember Don coming up to the production office one day and volunteering to have his character retire so that O'Neill could take over as commander of the SGC and thus make things easier from a creative standpoint. Wow. That was typical Don, incredibly generous. We didn't take him up on his kind offer, but later down the line, that more or less became the scenario that was adopted. To my recollection, the call to have Hammond reassigned was a mutual decision as part uh, on the part of Don and the show's executive producers, he enjoyed a semi-retirement of sorts, focusing on his artwork. Not his grandchildren? <laughs> <laughs> no, they got kidnapped. Yeah. Hammond's just there with pottery. They're on stage. Just watching ghosts and just, like, making clay. Wow, yeah. what a guy. What an absolute class act Volunteered. is Don S. Davis. Volunteered for uh, RDA to take his spot. Mm. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Wow. They I mean, could have at least brought a few more cameos for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pay him. Give the yeah. man some pocket change, some walking around money. And it's weird, like, as someone who hasn't watched these episodes in so long, I thought I knew what was coming next. It wasn't until O'Neill walked into Weir's office and he was dressed the way that he was dressed. You know, like you said a couple weeks ago, Reese, shirt untucked and, you know, just like swans <laughs> yeah. in. And I'm like, oh, that's right. This is what happens right now. Shit. Mm. So my last note for the episode of my notebook here is General f-ing O'Neill. Because it was just <laughs> yeah. like, who's going to take, oh, who, who's this doofus? You know, who's going to take over? Well, he's this and he's that. It's you. And he's yeah. like, I feel like that would normally be something that Jack would be like, oh, no, it's fine. But he was like, 
yeah, I kind of deserve oh, this shit. And I actually kind of want it. And yeah, it's on my list eventually. Like, I like that. He's like, yeah, maybe not yet, want. but eventually. And if, you know, Hammond wants me and you want me and the president wants me, then shit, yeah, I'll take it on. Mm. So Cash, baby. See, <laughs> when all those, when they were having that ceremony, when everyone was getting a promotion, I was like, is this real? Because Carter went through the whole thing with Pete, um, with that creep. Oh, with Fifth. Fifth. Mm. How all that was imaginary. And then the promotions happened again. I'm like, and then I was like, shit, is this real? Or is this? Mm. And then Replicata comes yeah, out. Yeah, see? And I'm like, oh, okay. So which one's, okay. Was it real? Was it not real? See, but I would have liked, and I kind of only just thought about it this at this point. It would have been amazing if the reveal wasn't Replicata. It was the real Carter. And the Replicata was on base mm. getting yeah. the promotion. Yeah, that's what I, that would have added so much form. more peril. I, was, I just thought of that, that uh, while I was watching it. I'm like, oh, that could have been hectic. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I thought it was when, yeah, when the I was like, whose who's mind is in that real Carter? Mm. I think that could have been more fun going forward because, yeah, I feel like the whole the whole farm scene was a real handbrake on the whole episode. Yeah, Pete, like, just get rid of oh, Pete. Yeah. Like Carter straight away sees through it and it's like as an audience I feel like we all went, well, we don't believe that that's not Carter's end game. Carter doesn't want to go and like just sit on a farm with a mullet. Yeah. <laughs> like, did, did you see those fake hair extensions? That, this, this is not real. This is a Carter we've seen, it's just you know. fake and she just pulls all the hair extensions <laughs> out. <laughs> I spent four hours putting those on you. Yeah. <laughs> so I think. I love you. I think, like yeah. Two they, creeps. Oh, fifth man, and Pete. I, like, yeah, Actually, one turns into the other. Fifth, you play him really well. Yeah. <laughs> you play Pete so well. It's so unbelievable. Yeah. Hello, but, Samantha. um. Yeah, I feel like it was, you know, so at the end she's like, I could never do this, I could never be with you fifth, blah, blah, blah. So his intention was basically, all right, well, f*** you, I'll drop you off on the planet. I've already got my Carter sex doll that'll mm. do whatever I want it to do because <laughs> yes. it's, yeah. you know, because it's made out of replicators, it'll follow oh, me. Another dude that's made a sex doll. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we insinuated Nareem. Well, we assumed he did. I feel like based on empirical data, he definitely, you know. That's why he let his own planet blow up. He's like, I'd rather this whole place burn than someone open up that cupboard on the second floor. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't learn robotics till he was 45. (laughs) After he met Carter. So, um, but no, you're right. I think that would have been much more interesting is as a slow burn, maybe like the the mid season finale to find out that this has actually been like a replicata the whole time. That would be so great. And did you see when replicata come out covered in that goo? Fifth did not look at her face no, once. No, no. <laughs> said right at her. <laughs> but uh, belly button. Finally, yeah. someone gets goo. Here I've been warning Daniel when he came back to be covered in goo. Yeah, I finally yeah. get a there naked SG one yeah. member covered in goo. Maybe that was in the back of your mind. Terminator moment. And so, okay, she comes up like you just said. He never looked at her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he's a robot. Like, why is that attractive to? Him? Like, yeah. what? How does he? I know nah, he's a human nah, robot. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like he's been in Carter's mind. He has all her memories. He has uh, the yeah. memory of Carter lying at home, finger finger banging herself to pictures of Jack. <laughs> oh, so why would him seeing her naked her for the first time? Yeah, just you know. Mate, they were replicator blocks filling his pants. <laughs> <laughs> That goo, that all that goo was just all those replicators just jizzing all Wouldn't over. Wouldn't that be that funny so if he just came little baby spider replicators? <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. crawl yeah. everywhere. It's so oh, great. Like from Charlotte's Web where all the baby spiders yeah. just drift into the wind. Yeah. So I, I feel bad for Amanda Tapping in episodes like this because she has to play a Carter with a different emotional contact with different other characters to what she played two episodes ago or five episodes ago. Like when in Chimera, loves Pete, tells him everything. A couple of episodes later, it's like, yeah, Pete, 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 Pete's great. Like, you know it's going well. We don't see him, but we know it's going well. Come with Lost City, O'Neill's going to die. Obviously, that's going to just change things, but O'Neill's going to die. She goes around there, and as we concluded on the podcast, she's going around there to root him. She oh, says yeah. to him after, hey, yeah. look, before the others come in and cock block yeah. me, this is what I was going to say, and you yeah. know what was going to go down City, after I told it was you. Going on. It, it was, was going to happen. They were going to She was like, you know yeah. what? O'Neill's dick was going to be the Lost City. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to make it lost. <laughs> In so many ways, yeah. I'm going to make this <laughs> deep underwater. <laughs> so wet. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> lost in fire. <laughs> So she she's like, you know, who is Pete? I don't care about Pete. When it comes down to it, I love Jack. And Unless then, Jack dies, then I love Pete. And then yeah, no, and then still episode, I'd rather a dead Jack O'Neill corpse <laughs> rigor mortis to squat on than Pete. <laughs> to and squat his, on and his limp dick fing <laughs> grandma hotel. 
and then <laughs> old Fifth is in her brain and giving her these this other world, this virtual reality illusion. And then when she's like, "You none of this is going to make me, re- you know, think this is real," and then he just throws the saucepan across the kitchen, yeah. and and he's like, <laughs> oh, "Patient, do you want me to be?" Ah! And she's like, "See, Pete would never do that. I don't like, know. Pete's so nice, yeah. he's scared like, of me." Hang on, what? So now you love Pete again? Like Pete's the greatest thing in the yeah. world? You wanted to bone Jack last week, mm. like? Yeah. And then there was there was that scene at the start of the episode where she's on the cargo ship with. Um, Teal and she's like trying to get stuff out of you. Like, oh, how's Ryak? How's Easter? He's fine. Then he's like, how's Pete? And she's like, fine, fine. Yeah, I don't want yeah, to yeah. talk about it. So like, yeah, I you, feel- like they've they've come to the conclusion that they will probably die going on this mission. And she's like, oh, how's your family? Yeah, they're fine. How's Pete? Thanks. Like, did you even tell Pete that you were going? But she, he's just going to be, oh, oh, okay, she's dead. She's I've got to, I've, to uh, I've take care of the phone galaxy. bill now. Yeah. <laughs> Another phone bill. That's what I mean. Like, I, I feel bad for Amanda Tapping. Like, she's playing what she's getting given to her in the script. You know, yeah. it's like, you love Pete. Mm. Act like you love Pete. So in this episode, on its own, I believe her. Two weeks ago, or one episode ago with Lost City, she loves O'Neill. I'm like, I know that you do, because that's what you're, you're performing. Yeah. It's just that when you... Because that episode contradicted the one before, which contradicted mm. the one before. Yeah. And it's just like, right, give her... I don't know. I just feel sorry for Amanda Tapping having to play Carter like that. She already has enough struggles with men in this episode, and then we yeah. make plus, her contradict her own relationship. Plus, they it. give her a mullet. Like, come on. Yeah. You know? <laughs> give her and a he's break. really pissed off about the mullet. Oh, think, uh, yeah. terrible. And Fifth is like... Struggling to to for, for Carter, he's like, I don't know what you don't understand. You either love me or I kill you. What's so mm. hard to understand about this? Which one do you want? Tell me. Death. De- obviously death. <laughs> obviously. No, but that makes me angry. So just love me. Yeah. No, no, no. Super just why, it, you being, why are you being <laughs> so difficult? <laughs> <laughs> Kill me then. She I'm knew, a human as well. She knew she was in for some trouble though. Like as soon as he popped out in that oh, ship, yeah. wherever she was, he emerged. She's like, oh my God, you would not believe how sorry I am for what we did to you all that time ago. Oh my God, please believe you have no idea. And I'm like, you don't even know if he's angry. You're just like, oh shit, this has come back to bite me <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. ass. Oh, yeah. I'm in a windowless room. It's got a rapey vibe to it. <laughs> yeah, the I'm walls, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The walls will kill me. Yeah. Um. I know I've been asking for a few seasons now that we see a, a vulnerable Carter. We've seen oh, it a couple of times. So you're going to say her cans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, vulnerable Carter. And we've seen it a few times before, but this one I think really showed the strength of her vulnerability. Like, yes, she just broke down and cried, but what it did was he was being so angry at her and, and just so um, pissed off that she broke down and started crying. And then he was like, oh, okay. You know, I'll be nice to you now instead of instead of going. Oh, she um, played him like a fiddle, your head. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, he was like, oh, okay, and and rubbed her face, and I was like, that's that's good that we can see the the vulnerability of her and the the strength of that vulnerability or the the outcome of it. I was happy with that, and I think she was genuinely upset about it because she was upset mm. that O'Neill left fifth there. Yeah, she didn't want to leave him. Mm. Yeah. So I don't think, yeah, I don't think that was completely out of place. Yeah. In her head, she's like, "Thank God, I've got these memories to back it up." When he sticks, when yeah, he's, like, when he's three knuckles deep in my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a man that can penetrate yeah. her mind. Yeah, right. <laughs> but at least she's like, at least I have that memory that he'll be able to see of me being like, "No, we should have kept him." Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That's true. His um his spider ship was weird though. I feel like it was just a knockoff of Anubis's hockey puck from um the start of last season. Remember when we destroyed. Oh, Anubis the replicator ship. spaceship. Yeah, yeah, so Fifth had that little sort of, you know, spider ship that took off at the end. Oh, yeah. With him and, and Replicator in it. It was kind of just Anubis's hockey puck ship, but with spider with legs. legs. Mm. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. All I, right. I did find that, like, kind of cool in a really, really creepy way where they're all going through the forests, all these mini little regular sized replicators, and then we find out they're j- building in themselves a giant replicator spider yeah, thing. One big I'm one. Like, that yeah. is some scary. If I walked up, like, I don't care who's on there. I'm not going near that Yeah, I'm like, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. That's some and what was with shit. those replicator bugs? Like, there was the normal ones, and then they had just big cockroach ones. Like, mm. what's the benefit of that shape? Um, I don't know. They've had them before. <laughs> Ergonomics. Remember um, <laughs> when they were on the submarine, it was one of those big cockroach-shaped ones that was, like, generating... Pa- no, it was... No, it was on yeah, a ship just a, or something. It was like a yeah. It was when the it was when Apophis died. They had the giant. That's the one I'm the thinking The gigantic of. one in the mothership. Didn't, yeah, and yeah. that was like the didn't, cockroach didn't design. Die, it was like an energy. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. Injuries. There's a whole bunch of those. In Hashtag there as Apophis well. lives. Yeah. But I I much prefer that replicators like human form replicators can get. F- 
but I love just the swarms. I don't. I didn't understand why they didn't shoot that ship. They're like Carter's on it. And it's like yeah, but all the replicated yeah. docks will incinerate, and she'll just if be Jack sitting shot there. it with his little makeshift gun, yeah, ancient mm. gun. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Just shoot the ship. Yeah, there was there was a weird point too. I think something must have got cut out because if you remember, like um, the three boys being down. And the you know Jack's going nuts with the with the ARG, and then Fifth shows up and says, "You fire another shot, and I kill Carter," and they stop, and then it cuts to a different scene, and then it cuts back to them, and Fifth is just gone. Yeah, and then the boys are off, sort of running, trying to find Carter again and shooting replicators again. So like there was just a there was a weird missing scene. Like they mm. there was no resolution to them talking with um, Fifth because it kind of cuts back to Fifth in Carter's mind going, and I was like. Oh, it doesn't make sense because then yeah they just keep keep firing at the replicators. Yeah, so, I just assume that can't fifth, remember. Yeah, fifth appeared out of um, like all the replicator blocks just formed him, like he was sort of portaling or transporting himself. Uh, that's what. That's how I. He definitely ran there. But the then, sheen of sweat. But then the fact that sheen he just, of repli- spider replicators on his forehead. Yeah, but then the fact that he just disappeared, like he said, That's how he sweats. He sweats replicator blocks. <laughs> he said, "You you fire one more so shot weird. and I'll kill Carter," and then seemed to just disappear. And then they're like, "Oh, okay," and then kept shooting replicators. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, it was, you yeah, won't. It was super weird. You love it. Yeah. As soon as they got to the ship, they just watched it go. I'm like, shoot it. Yeah. And I, Idiot. Yeah, and then after that, that, that oh, by the way, she's laying down somewhere. <laughs> they all go off in different directions and Tilk just tracks her straight away. Yeah. Everyone's like calling out to her and then Tilk's just like, oi, over here. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Didn't even need to call her name. Neutronium. Neutronium. Do we hear it? Is that, is that the new... Um, Nakoda. Nakoda. Not really. No, that's, that's, been, around, <laughs> it's, that's been around since um, season six. That's how, that's how human form replicators are made. They need neutronium. Right. So that was back in Prometheus, they... Um, because you can make normal replicators out of anything, but you can only make human form replicators with neutronium. And where's that found? But it's very, very on the rare. Asgard homeworld. Yeah, world. on the Asgard, oh, obviously. Oh, right. It's <laughs> Asgard technology. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah right. it's used for both. Even in even in Star Trek, it's like a super rare element that like can't be created. You can't sort of in replicate what? it. In what? In, I said it. If you, it's up to Mitch whether yeah. he's going to fly it or not. No, I'm contractually obliged to <laughs> do that. That's fine. I'm so there is that. neutronium in Trek. It's actually called that. I think it's a real world element. Yeah, I'm fairly certain. What was it? Uh, what was it called? An avatar? They like it was so basic. It was because they it was hard to get. Oh, it, it was, was like um, avatarium or something. No, it was <laughs> yeah. um, oh, ferngullium. Rarium or something. Ferngullium. Is titanium. I know what you're thinking. I was like rare and unobtainium or something. Unobtainium, yeah, unobtainium. Yeah, it was so unobtainium. <laughs> oh my it's like god! James yeah. Cameron, mate, you created Terminator. <laughs> you were really relying on that 3D, weren't you? Yeah. That was in the first draft. <laughs> you just forgot to change yeah, it. It was in brackets. The entire script. <laughs> unobtainium. We'll think of something much more <laughs> clever to suit this galaxy sparing <laughs> space <laughs> epic. <laughs> unobtainium. <laughs> Why? Yeah. It's unobtainable anywhere except for this planet. Yeah. Makes Thanks, sense. Jim. Thanks, Jim. You can't great. say no to Jim, though. He'll kill you. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And they have sex with the tail. He's so. got Arnie. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Stick your tail in my tail. <laughs> so the United Alliance of the System Lords makes it comes back. <laughs> now against Baal. Yeah. Yeah, this is like fifth, ga- uh, the, what was it? F- fair game. Mm. Mm. Again. Yeah, again. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, we have to have the System Lords come to the base. Dun, dun, dun. And I'm like, it's happened before. before. Mm. It's not a new thing. Although Weir's in charge, so anything could happen. But uh, no, I liked it. <laughs> the whole negotiations. I think the whole negotiations. I think were written really well. I just um, yeah, I feel like it was just things that we've seen before. So I was like, just yeah, tell them no. I like not the, interested. Yeah, yeah I like the weird Daniel shit. scenes when they kind of go aside and talk on their own. I like those. But the scenes with the <laughs> the system laws, I'm like, eh, yeah, kind of seen it. When Weir and Daniel go back, Weir leaves her door open. <laughs> so they it like if you go down that corridor to the left, that's where the briefing room yeah. is. So they're clearly hearing everything. I, I did hate. <laughs> no, they're the... eating those finger foods, mate. <laughs> it Lord actually felt, them out. It did feel really weird to watch <laughs> a bunch floor. of girls just sitting there waiting and yeah. just yeah eating some yeah. Yeah. sandwiches hors d'oeuvres and shit. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like they don't. I feel I don't. Yeah. What would they eat if anything? Like they're they're sub- they well they eat symbiotes. <laughs> otherwise, yeah, that's I mean the only time we've ever seen them eat is be cannibalistic. Yeah. But they're sitting there, like you said. Yeah. There was um there was some like they were goofs that they were goofs like people had issues apparently with 
Daniel Jackson's like uniform throughout the show. And they they sort of looked at it as a goof because mm. if you watch closely, it's like when they beam down to the Asgard planet at the end, he's got like green pants on but a black jacket on, and they're like, "Where did you get yeah. that from?" But I actually went back and it's like if you follow it, it's like Car- um, Carter and Teal had all the black gear. Yeah, they took it with them. Yeah, they were be- Carter was beamed out without her jacket, so Daniel was probably just wearing her jacket or a spare one. It fits. Yeah, with <laughs> well, she has the same size jacket as everyone else. Um, Don't assume size, mate. <laughs> Well, no, only because, oh, it's a spoiler for Reese, so I won't say it. Um, but yeah, but then, so it's like, but Jack was still wearing his all green gear from when he was frozen in Lost City. So yeah. it's like, Teal is in full black because that's what he left <laughs> Oh, in. don't say oh, Teal's black. That. Right. Jesus. <laughs> Every episode, Matty, Teal's full black. <laughs> we know. You said that, not us. So Teal's in full black. <laughs> Some nights he is. Ah, uh, shit. I, I thought CGI Thor looked pretty good when he was having to move around the ship and walk mm, and stuff. Yeah. Like I thought, we, we've obviously kept him seated and behind a console for most of his appearances on yeah, this show. F- lazy, yeah. <laughs> but with this, where they get up and they go to walk to, I think it was when they just beam Jack up, and and they all like walk over there, and Thor sort of like walks with them or in front of them, and I'm like, that actually looks. It looked pretty good, like mm. especially for a guy that does look very rubbery. Like how like moist his skin might be in the way that light reflects off. Like I thought mm. the CGI actually was pretty solid for something they didn't need to do. They could have kept him on a desk somewhere. Yeah, um, I actually they thought could have had a floating chair or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, they, <laughs> yeah. like could like, have kept uh, the puppet like but, Yoda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like when they beam him in and out on a chair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Or when they had to when they had to move him revisions and he was in that kind of floating yeah. stasis pod. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. That was, just, that's just a recliner that just kind of collapses up into a chair <laughs> and suddenly he's Professor X from the cartoon just like yeah. floating around. I just love that Michael Shanks was talking to himself in that scene. Mm. And the weird thing is he was time. talking to himself again because he was also the voice of the other two Asgard that were on the screen. Like, No, really? Right. Yeah, Veneer and whoever the other one was. Mm. I didn't realise there was two different ones. I thought Thor was just always... Crossing back to the same as oh racist, but apparently they all look the same now. They all look the same. They literally all look the same. Literally, I all like, got like the same clone body. How like be all end all that whole plan was? It was like, well, we've got all our minds basically in you know some kind of little central hub. So mm. the replicators screw this yeah. shit up. There's only going to be a handful of us left. Like mm. we've got their consciousnesses waiting just to be put into new clone bodies and stuff. So it wasn't just a we need to win this battle because we're trying to win battles against the replicators. Yeah, they're trying like, to rebuild their civilization. Yeah, like they're gonna yeah. they'll they'll arguably wipe us out if we don't. And then just the I was trying to work out the logistics of it. There, they're in hyperspace, and he's like, well, we can't fire, but if we get close enough, and we use our self destruct, then it might take them. With us, I'm like, is that how shit would work? But whatever. But mm. I, li- I just like the idea when he communicated <laughs> yeah. via the wormhole to the other Asgard and was like, well, they're going to pop out and just blow them all to hell. So that thing literally come out of the wormhole, appears and they just, 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 just like explode yeah, straight. I'm like, yeah. an Asgard ambush above their new home world. I'm like, that's but sick. Did Thor just recycle Carter's idea? Yep. Yeah. It was like straight up getting up next to him, blow him up. Mm. That's a stupid idea and it just might work. It might work twice. <laughs> yeah, luck- luckily I've got a new brand new ship to do yeah. it with. I think yeah. in Small Victory, she's- Thor said something like, they're very smart, they might not fall for this again. Mm. Which is, and I guess it's- that's true because in a way, like the replicators um, shot like a projectile into sh- into Thor's ship. Mm. Yeah. I just found that really weird that Thor didn't just go, it- Thor said, oh, they've shot, one of our a projectile at us and Tilk's like, will it go through the shields? He's like, most likely. And he did nothing about it. Yeah, just yeah. turn it's the like, ship, mate. Yeah, it makes some kind of defensive manoeuvre because yeah. I doubt it's not like they have a any... It's not like that little thing is a ship on its own. Mm. It's just like an icicle floating yeah, no through space. Pack. So I reckon if you just turn left, you would have probably <laughs> missed. missed you. Yeah. yeah. But I guess just saying about how they're not going to fall for it again, I guess in a way they didn't because unbeknownst to us... Fifth had already separated from that main ship and snuck in on his own way. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah, that's they what said, I assume. Because yeah. that's the only way. Because ah, Fifth and Carter were on board that ship, so as soon as it dropped out of hyperspace, everyone unloaded on it and it exploded, and everyone thought Sam was dead. And then we find out later that 
Fifth and, and Sam were on that little hockey puck spider. So and and Thor says something about they must have separated earlier. So it's whilst like, in hyperspace. Yeah. Oh, in okay. Hyperspace, yeah. Yeah. I so I guess in a way because mm. I thought they all su- I thought they survived it. Like how he said some of the debris made it into through the the orbit. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. But like I'm re-entry. like, well, well, yeah, Fifth would necessarily need air, but it's like well, Carter would. Yeah. To survive re- and to survive re-entry in general. Yeah. So um, that makes sense. So yeah, his little spider ship. I guess in the same way, Anubis's little hockey puck separated from his ship when it was about to explode. Mm. Um, fifth kind of separated in hyperspace. I think Thor's lack of reaction to when they realised Carter was dead, or as far as they thought, would have actually made even would have actually been even better had they have named that ship the Carter because yeah. like oh, you yeah. know, like Tilk turns around and he, he's like, I am sorry. And it's like, dude, you've known this woman. She's helped, like, she, a couple of seasons ago, yeah. helped save your shit. More than okay? Daniel. Yeah. More, well, more yeah. than Daniel. <laughs> but what if he named it the Carter? It wasn't a big deal. It was just called the Samantha Carter. They get up there and it's just like, yeah. blows up. And he's like, turns to Tilk. That's uh, unfortunate. We just named this ship. And it's like, oh, this is awkward, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. There's and just then, some little uh, telescope. have to change this to the Daniel Jackson. Well, and they, they <laughs> still, just a telescope on t- the home world that they've called the Samantha Carter. <laughs> they still could have made yeah. the what joke too, because the whole joke was like, you know, Thor says to, to any, oh, I've just beamed you on, you know, on board the Daniel Jackson. And he's like, what? And then Daniel's like, what? So well, that still would have been funny if they'd gone, O'Neill, I've just beamed you inside the Samantha Carter. Oh. He still would have gone, what? And everyone would have gone, what? Like, So you still could have done that joke. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. Daniel walked in to make sure it didn't happen. What? what? Yeah. what? Oh, it's a shit, bro. But I did love um, <laughs> what could have been Teal'c's last words. And I'm like, this is pretty badass. How can we stop them? My ship's weapons will not function in hyperspace. Much like the shields. However, in close proximity, the self-destruct may be sufficient to eliminate both ships. I am sorry, but we have no choice. If the human form replicators reach Orilla, they will have the resources to replicate many thousands of times. We cannot allow that to happen. So be it. That was so sick. be it. It's like, like man. If I was like a you know massive Australian bogan, like the ones that get um, such is life, like tattooed across oh, their stomach, I'd get so be it. <laughs> just so, so be, it. be it in an arch across the stomach. I just like it how Thor's like, I'm sorry. But we're gonna have to do this. I've already uploaded my consciousness and sent it through subspace <laughs> yeah, to the yeah. homeworld, so I will survive. Yeah, but what, you will be you, dead. I'm gonna beat myself see. out before we blow up. But I'm sorry, you're gonna die. Bro, yeah. who gave up his life, his wife, his child, his, his everything for like what was he, a hundred and something years to fight alongside the Tauri against the Gould and save that galaxy from the oppression. Of, yeah. Of, now yeah, he's yeah. in yeah. another galaxy. They force him to abandon his rebellion yeah. that he by built. himself, helping out another. <laughs> alien race that does nothing for us the mo- most of the time yeah. destroy their own creation he's like well I, I, if I'm taking someone out yeah, that, <laughs> yeah that's, that's really that's what enough. I'm about what I'm you... a good guy you need to stop bad guys at, <laughs> yeah. at the core that's what I can do yeah what you don't see is like while he's talking to Tilk his hands are just moving furiously on like the controls as he's like downloading his consciousness into like a little you know um, escape pod and just mm. launching that and Tilk's like what's that sound he's like nothing nothing yeah. it would have been even better had, T- yeah, had Tilk have actually seen something like yeah. I feel like that kind of selflessness from Thor saying we're going to have to destroy ourselves came too late I feel like as soon as the replicators came out of the event horizon of the black hole he should have just sent a message to Arilla a subspace message and then just kamikaze straight into that replicator ship with with uh, Daniel Jackson mm. Because yeah. at that point, the, there's no way that the the replicators would have been able to sustain that, and then it would have just got sucked into the black hole. They'd yeah, but I don't, I don't think he knew how advanced that ship was, and they would have still had their shields up uh, because they would have had the shields up until they went entered hyperspace. Yeah, I suppose to that, which point that would, would be the late. first ship we've ever seen that's made entirely out of replicator blocks, isn't mm. it? Because it's like in the past they've kind of just taken over other ships. Did like he even Asgard try to shoot it? Well. He just kind of turned tail and ran, didn't he? Yeah, and then yeah. they're like, oh, can we attack it? Uh, most likely my weapons won't do anything. Mm. And then yeah, my shields are shit too. Yeah. Just cop and it right the, in the ass. <laughs> yeah. The black We're hole. We're just going to die, I guess. The black <laughs> hole would have stopped back. him from like, you know, sending a message to Aurilla as well, I guess. Yeah, that's true. 
or at least so. yeah kamikaze and do it i don't know mm. shoot it mm. try something yeah, yeah for, just turn tail and run for yeah. a noble viking Mate. race to base their religion on the asgard yeah, <laughs> yeah they're not that noble are they? he didn't yeah. even turn left when they shot something at him as if he's gonna <laughs> try and attack yeah. Zach, it looks just like is that gonna penetrate the shields most likely this is a they new ship turn. i haven't worked out how to use it yet <laughs> <laughs> i know stop and go yeah totally what are the replicators used for fuel like on their own, they're like thinking computer chips, right? And mm. then they they building blocks like they're just they're yeah, very physical. True. Solar, but then <laughs> they <laughs> they they come together in the form of a ship, and then mm. they just take off. And there's like an energy blast, and yeah. they become a hyperdrive that shoots off. And it's like we just accept it because they look like a ship, so a ship would have to do that. Yeah. But I'm like, one of them has to like transform into some yeah. other form of a hyperdrive. Yeah. Mitch, yeah. they're very advanced. They're just crystals. Very advanced. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Well, that magnets. Ma- that makes sense, yeah. I guess, because you then you look at fifth, and I'm like, you're not just one replicator. You're several things coming together to make one being, right? Like one yeah. physical form. So some replicator, his entire job is being curly hair. <laughs> like why couldn't he be bald like why couldn't he have a clean cut like Kurt Russell mm. from the movie very Lego <laughs> shapes like that would make sense for a yeah, replicator yeah. like replicate and seems form. a waste of neutronium doesn't absolutely it? like are there, so, are many, there... he's so many strands and locks of curly yeah. hair and like, are, are that's there a some... replicator that's seven <laughs> replicators that are just there to make him look really cute and is that you natural you could have extended or... your dick instead of having stupid curly hair <laughs> And, like, is that natural or is there another block of replicators, like, becoming, like, a bottle of soul glow just for him to spritz yes, on that yeah, yeah, just, just to just keep, to keep, that keep that nice, going. lovely sheen? Yeah. Mm, you raise a good point, Mitchell. I think it would be WD-40, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think O'Neill, and it's a shame because at the end they sort of tease that, hey, I'm not going to be in this show as much anymore. I'll come back for the big stuff, but you're only going to see me, you know, for, like, a, a minute or two at a time as I send you on your way because he had two of the best lines in this episode. And one's when they are shooting the replicators and like when he had the, the U Butte gun, he's like, Yeah, who's your daddy? Like yeah. he actually said that line. I'm like, Well yeah. done. Yeah. We got that in, took us eight years. And then at the end where Weir's like, Hey, look, for all that you've done and all that you have uh, will ever do and just to congratulate you, thank you, whatever, uh, you've actually been invited to dinner at the White House. He's oh. Yeah. Do you know what they're having? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm only going to go, even though the president's not Kinsey and I kind of like him, I'm only going there if they're serving like a really good cut of meat. <laughs> like, that is so Jack O'Neill. He'd yeah, rather go and catch chicken, no fish he's not going. and drink warm beer at his own cabin yeah, than yeah, go to the sure. White House and being waited on. Yeah, I did like it when he's like, I've never had a desk. And Carter's like, for the record, sir, <laughs> you, you, have a desk. you do have a desk. Nope. Never <laughs> yeah, needed it. You don't and he's like, it. we could get someone much worse. Like, oh, that came out wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So this new replicator gun, I love it how it's just sitting there and they're like, oh, no one knows how to use it. And then all of a sudden, O'Neill just picks it up and pulls the trigger. And then Thor goes, oh, now that you've used it, I know I can build one for my ship. It's like, oh, how convenient. Yeah. Well, yeah, they should have realised it's like, well, it's, it's Jack. Of course he's going to make a gun. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm sure like Thor would have been like, oh, well, I didn't know whether it was an explosive device that could have destroyed us. Or I thought it was a probe. Yeah. It's like, well, no, it's, it's Jack. He's going <laughs> to make a gun. Did. Yeah, I thought yeah. as soon as he made it, I'm like, that's obviously a weapon. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's, it's a gun. It looks like a gun. Mm. I mean, give it a go. You Why made not? that. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Mm. <laughs> I think we've learnt by now. If you they say you've done something yeah. and you don't know about it and you've got ancient yeah. shit going on, yeah. just accept it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was weird. <laughs> what a trip. Did Daniel have pink eye? <laughs> Probably. Did you notice that? No. In the during the negotiations, his eye was super, super red. Wow. Maybe maybe Lord you spat in it. Maybe. <laughs> Hockaloogie. Wasn't he a dumbass, Lord You? Mm. He's so dumb. You passed it, mate. Shut your mouth. I will not need. I do not need a break. I don't, the other system lords wouldn't they be like? You don't need your first prime, bro. Leave mm. them at home. Yeah. And then you say Anubis instead of Baal. Yeah. Even Jackson was like, "Oh, I got a cover for him here." You mean Baal? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I think that's what you were saying before, Brent. Is that we didn't get anywhere new with a lot of parts of even just that story, the guild stuff. Like, I figure you bring back you, you bring back his first prime and that he's ailing. Like, we've heard that before. Yeah. And to bring him back, oh, yeah, he's ailing, his first prime's here. And I'm like, take that next step where 
His first prime tries to assume his position where the other system lords try to off him because they know that he's useless. Like he's yeah. there controlling them because of how long he's been around and the respect that they kind of have to have for him in that moment. But I don't know, move. I feel like with it, this might even be the third episode where it's like, well, Yu's on his way out and he has to yeah. have this guy translate shit for mm. him. And then they the just other go system off in their didn't way. even blink an eye when he made that mistake. Either. No, no. It's like, oh yeah, it's that's you. That's old Grandpa over here. <laughs> yeah. He forgets some shit about the war. I do like Camelus though. I really enjoy Camelus. I think he's fun. Yeah, he's played. Um, he's played um, Major Coburn back in like Maternal Lindsay. He's been like an SG member that actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he did um, Andromeda with Kevin Sorbo and Lexa Doig. Yeah, okay. He was in that. He had. It's Doig. like he was like an alien. And he was like a Wolverine alien, but instead of the bones coming out of the middle of his fists, they were like three little fins on like the backside of his of his wrist. It yeah, no one here is effective. Very odd. Yeah, I like it because oh, Batman, mate. He brought <laughs> <laughs> he brought back the um, like flamboyancy of the gold. You yeah, know, the, like Apophis brought with like how gold he was and the and the eyeliner and just the drapes that he would wear. Yeah, and stuff. like Apophis had that one outfit where he was like full gold, completely covered, but abs out. Mm. And then I feel like, you know, um, Camulus is like that too. He's like covered up, but guns out. Yeah. And he's just like, boom. Yeah. Yeah. I did like um, Amaterasu as well. Although apparently that actress um, auditioned for the role of Taylor in Atlantis, which I'm really, I'm, oh, really, right. I'm really glad she didn't get that role. Yeah, Cause I don't yeah. know if I can Why? see, I don't know, but well, based, based on what I've seen her as um, Amaterasu, I'm like, I don't know if I could see her as Taylor. She was hot. But <laughs> it's true. Oh, she didn't have great lines in this, and mm. her voice was flanged, so I'm sure mm. she's trying to play Taylor. Yeah. She would have done an all right job. Mm. Obviously not as good as the other bird. What's her <laughs> name? Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. Rachel Luttrell. <laughs> That's her. That's yeah. it. Rachel Luttrell. Yeah. And uh, Mitch, was there a bit of a nerd out for you this episode? First time at Stargate, HD, widescreen format. You, yeah, you didn't notice it at all, did you? I noticed it in the Asgard in uh, in the Daniel Jackson. I always notice when Daniel's nice and wide. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, for me, I think I I, don't know, I just thought it was new season. I'm like, oh, it just looks a little bit different because they. It, I don't know that it even without intent. I think go into a new season just the way that they mm. move about, just the familiarity. So I didn't actually think about that. Um, yeah, wide too screen. much, but. I yeah I have watched obviously I watched ahead a little bit and done our Atlantis for next week because I got excited so I uh, I have some thoughts about the way that looks too compared so I want to ask you those sort of questions about that but we'll cover that yeah, in nice. our first Atlantis chat. Sweet. Thor said something about like they downloaded all the consciousness into bodies. Mm. I can't imagine all those Asgards just building shit. You know what I mean? Like on work sites, yeah. <laughs> they just don't have the build for it. No. They just beam it all in. They just use up. their mm. yeah their creation technology. Just a whole building plop. It's like playing um like Ultra Sims. Just like so why do they need building. so many people? <laughs> Creativity, mate. Oh, all those all those unique minds. Someone's got to. <laughs> someone would have wonderful chats the food. to yeah. tone deaf conversations with. Yeah, what's what's that one from the Fifth truck. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Penegal said something about <laughs> the replicators ruined so many of those minds already. Yeah, and all the information. Like, oh mm. shit! I wonder if Asgard get PTSD from the replicators, mm. or if they evolve past that. Probably, mm. they can program it out of their mind. Yeah, I guess that nothing else to do without any genitals. So, <laughs> imagine, how, oh, so imagine, imagine how much time imagine you'd imagine save. How, yeah, imagine how much more, like you know, how much more we'd accomplish in a day if we didn't have genitals. Jesus, what would the internet be used for? Right. <laughs> <laughs> We might not have it yet. There was, there was yeah. not, a, not a demand to get porno <laughs> out to as many people as quickly as possible. There's um, there's a line I think it's in Scrubs where Doctor Cox is like, he's like, "What is the internet except for porn? If you took all the porn off the internet, there would only be one website, and it'll be called BringBackThePorn.com." <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you three are all happily married men, so you guys don't watch porn anyway, obviously. We watch porn because we're happily married. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you say happily. <laughs> So, Reese, what do you think moving forward? We've got um, No Hammond, Jack's in the general chair. Yeah, look, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of big change. Uh, mm. I do love Hammond, one of my favourite characters. Um, obviously, over the last season or two, we've gotten used to not seeing O'Neill as much. So, you know, that's... I, I guess There's plenty I'm, more where they came from. I, I yeah. guess I'm sitting all right with that at the moment. But, no, nah, look, this episode, obviously, it was it was... It was an epic episode. Had everything. 
Um, don't like the replicators, but, you know, take what we can get. And what, what about SG-1? Do you think maybe Jonas is going to come back and be our fourth? Definitely. <laughs> he should have. I don't we know why they didn't do that. Hope, yeah. I honestly don't know why. So, yeah, it'll be interesting where they go from here then. I wonder what Corin Emmick thought when he did see yeah. that episode. Yeah, he goes, like, oh, Oi. I knew he was not going to be on the team anymore. And, and Carter's like been promoted. It's like, there is yeah. there is absolutely room for <laughs> they, me on this team. They need an extra person for SG-1. And there's a whole new spin-off series, Atlantis, that I can have an opportunity to go to. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Nothing. Just sat Neither. next to his phone and just never <laughs> called. Like, yeah. how insulting. <laughs> you need yeah. a new agent, bro. Let's call David Hewlett instead. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll learn to love him. Is wow. it a bad sign? That, again, not Tolerate. remembering exactly. I'm assuming we're going to see a lot more bile, and that's excellent. Um, you see my bile's anytime you like, mate. <laughs> but the fact that this episode started off the recap as previously on Stargate SG1, and it was about fifth and the human replicators. I was like, oh shit, already we get replicators. Mm, yeah. Okay, and obviously that a lot of what this double episode's about. But it's not like they ended the replicator threat at the end of this two parter. And the fact that there's so much of Replicator in the first two episodes of Season 8 makes me worried that we're going to get a lot of Replicator stuff in this season. Oh, mate. So you don't have to answer Just that question. Wait. But that was something that I was kind of concerned about. But if it's offset against a lot more Baal, then I guess mm. I'll accept it. Well, we basically got no Baal in Season 7. He was in mm. the opener and that was it. Like, name mentioned only. And I'm like, no, bring him back. Because, like, I guess I didn't say this last week and I just thought of it, but... Like Apophis, when he was around for so long, that was excellent. He's around for four seasons or whatever. Then we had what was, what was the other bloke's name that sort of come along and did nothing? Um, Sokar. Sokar. Like Sokar was supposed to be huge, mm. and then he was nothing. And and that was why I don't remember. I still after this rewatch don't remember Sokar. And then along comes Anubis. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's right. Anubis is like the second best compared yeah. to Apophis. There's, Ironically, there's, pl- played yeah. by the same actor as Sokar. <laughs> there's there's two. Uh, there's daylight between the two of them, but Anubis is second best. And now that he's gone, I'm like, you really weren't that big of a threat, man. Like, I don't... Mm. I, I'm, I, I've got a lot of nostalgia for you, I guess, but the, now I've rewatched it. I'm like, it's Apophis and no one. Yeah, it, it's hard to get attached to an oil slick in a robe. Yeah. So you're just like, oh. But now Bol, and, and he's a bit flamboyant, and he's got a great voice, and he's got a lot of charm as a bad guy. Like, he is like Apophis where mm. I don't want him to die off. All the others, I was happy for them to die off at their time, but I don't ever want to see Baal die off the same way I didn't want to see Apophis because he was too much fun to not have around. Yeah. So. And he only gets more fun from here. Yeah. It's, it's time, time for the Get Into Kate Harry Mailbag. <sighs> Heather Cowlitz just sent us in an email. Freaking love your podcast. Hey, guys, in my best Australian accent. Hey I can't boys. even begin to explain how much joy I get out of your podcast. Thank you very much. Constantly laughing, snorting. So unladylike, but you know what? We welcome it. Or practically peeing my pants. Also unladylike, <laughs> but not shits are given when I'm listening to you. That's fair enough. You have the best podcast, hands down, that I've ever taken the time to listen to. Holy Shit, that's a hands down. Wow. You need to listen to small podcasts. <laughs> Each one of you brings such a hilarious <laughs> perspective to the great and powerful Stargate SG One. I'm binging the entire series again as I binge your podcast. That's a good way to do it. Perfect. I just listened to episode 150, which is Resurrection. And even though the episode was total shit, <laughs> and it was our bottom episode yeah. of season mm. seven, if you heard last week's podcast, I have to give Shanksy a small berth due to an interview I read. He stated that the script he turned in was basically thrown out and completely rewritten. Brennan was actually hinting on this. Oh, um, yeah. So either his true vision was worse than total shit or the writers gave us total shit and blamed it on Shanks. Yeah, still gave him the writing credit. Nah, yeah. Shanks is shit. <laughs> Speaking of Shanks, is he really as much of a douche canoe as you guys make him sound? I love douche canoe. I know little about him other than the fact that he's damn hot and I'd like to bang him into next week. Oh, Heather, who wouldn't? My lord. God, reach Heather. Well, enough of my jabbering. Keep up the laugh so I can continue to look like a nut job at work while I laugh and snort like a wild animal. People actually leave me alone. Until next time, cheers from... Wow, I don't know where you live. Cuyahoga? Um, Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, U.S. of Ohio. A. I, I, that just occurred to me Cuyahoga. just reading that. Why aren't blowjobs called nut jobs? <laughs> wow, right. that's the first thing. No, yeah, I just... Nut job just made me think. Why isn't that a sex act? I would say that like um, Shanksy isn't as bad as we say, but it's just really fun because he left the show 
to do other things mm, to be like real a actor. real thespian. Yeah, it was yeah. a it's great ongoing wanky, joke that's so funny. So we just go with it. Yeah, yeah. same with the Cooper. Same with Cooper. Cooper yeah. I mean, that's one so of the things. Cooper really is terrible. Rubbish. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's one of the things they say about you know Stargate as as the show as a production. It's like if you're a dick, you don't get work. So it's yeah. the reason they bring back so many secondary characters <clears> is because they're really nice people and they get along and and. and you know, O'Neill set up, also Richard Innocent set up that it should be a fun, you know, laid back set. Yeah. So I don't think, you know, Shanksy could have stayed on for this long without everyone else hating him if he was the douche canoe that we make him out to be. Douche canoe. I love douche canoe. That's great. <laughs> uh, Stuart Ragdale slipped into my DMs and I'm wondering if it's maybe a, a, a pseudonym that Mitch goes by because he's done the same thing Mitch does. He starts with Marty. You mentioned that Marty. Marty. you mentioned that William Devane wasn't on your radar until you watched Inauguration, but a good film to watch that he starred in or started in was a TV movie from 1987 called Time Stalkers. Interesting premise, and we'll start to get into Gates' time travel debate all over again. Let's, Just what we need. Let's not. Let's not and say <laughs> we did. Uh, if you watch it, you will see some familiar faces that have been in with RDA in MacGyver, and also some Star Trek stuff. But be interested to see what you think. Well, I'm going to go check out. Time Stalkers. I've just brought it up on old IMDb. Mm. Oh, there he is. He's on the poster. Boom. TV movie. Scott McKenzie, a history professor, becomes involved with two time travellers from the year 2586 after making a discovery in an old photograph from 1886. Is that the year the Doc went back to? 1886? 1885. 1885. Oh, but. That sounds fun. Anything with time travel, mate. That's it. It's old. I watched an episode of MacGyver the other day. Terrible. It's new epic. one or the old one? It's epic. <laughs> no, I'd never go the new one. Well, here's what, here's what I'm... The I'm, new one. Smart guy. He's a smart guy. Here's what I'm tossing out there is you've got the guy from who played Havoc in the in the new X-Men movies as MacGyver. Yeah, Lucas Hedges. Yeah, and then we've been talking a lot about um, Jensen Ackles coming mm-hmm. on to do a new S-U. Well, his mate from Supernatural, Jared Padalecki, mm-hmm. has just been cast and picked Walker, up for Texas the Walker, Ranger. Texas Ranger. Yeah. Can we have MacGyver and Walker's Texas Ranger do like a crossover? It'd be like the new Magoo. The Arrow and the Flash. Mm, yeah. I thought you were going to suggest that Lucas Hedges be like, you know, in the in the new Stargate SG one because he oh. plays a role that used to be played by RDA and now he could play a new role in a show that was you know Nah, I don't think I want him in my Stargate. No, I don't want him in my nah. Stargate either. Nah. I just didn't want him in MacGyver. <laughs> <laughs> and Not like, that it was his fault, we just no. didn't want MacGyver back. Yeah. Absolutely. And if we're going to be talking about Jensen Ackles in the same sentence, we're not going to be picking someone else over mm. Jensen Ackles. Yeah. Give him no. a bloody... What, um, what about when he says no? Please. Well, I mean... We, <laughs> don't we, bother. Don't bother making it. We all said you can he, be the producer. All right, I'll do it. Well, I was saying that, you know, Jensen Ackles probably say no because he doesn't need the money because they were getting like a million dollars an episode. Mate, or you don't act for the money. Yeah. What about yeah, Rachel from Friends? Acting. She's still banging out movies. Yeah, well, I was going to say, and obviously then Jared Padalecki, <laughs> like surely he's not doing Walker, Texas Ranger reboot for the Passion Project. No, surely there's going to be good money in that. The other guy from Supernatural. Supernatural. Sam from Supernatural. Yeah, right. Sammy. He's going to be seen it. He's gonna be Walker. Should do a podcast. Walker, mm. <laughs> 15 Texas seasons. Ranger. <laughs> I just like, I have um, Richard Dean, this isn't a mailbag, but Richard Dean Anderson has like a, a Twitter page. I think his kids run it, at Anderson Dean. And the, ma- the the highlighted tweet is, Hi, Wiley here. Dad doesn't know how to use Twitter, but he sends his love to his followers. You can keep up with him at randerson.com. <laughs> R.D. Anderson. R.D. Anderson.com. I was just like, that's classic O'Neill. <laughs> just really couldn't be f- Tilk, <laughs> can you do Twitter for me? <laughs> Um, just, uh, I want to I want to touch on a little bit of this uh, email from Michael Trainer because you know we had, we had a bit of a laugh the other week because um, I am the clag of the group and uh, <laughs> I see that Michael here has broken down you know what he likes about uh, each one of us in the show and so I thought oh, oh is there another glue chat uh, no Mitch highly appreciate your efforts you're cool. It's just a bit too much Broncos and Queensland talk. <laughs> and now I, I paused there and thought, I'm like, I don't ever like start that. I feel like I'll react if someone, one of you guys brings it up. And I don't know why either of the Gibson brothers would because you don't support <laughs> either of those two teams. Them. And Maddie doesn't really watch footy. So, I like, I don't know why anyone else asked me, but, I, you know, it has mm. come up. And then he. I think you writes, two were talking about Chase. 
maybe another podcast. Well, I think that's maybe what he's uh, referring to. In brackets, he says, maybe it was just those few minutes in that one episode while Brennan took a shit, but it has left you with a taint. <laughs> a taint. So 160 plus episodes <laughs> of us. And there was that one, yeah. And yeah. hey, look, Damo, I just loved it. I do like this. So Joss and Link, both great additions, though I question Joss, their Joss. commitment to the team. They are kind of like the Tokra in that they turn up whenever they feel like it, contribute some gold and or vinegar, then they just f*** <laughs> off again until they feel like coming back. That's pretty accurate. Absolutely. Yeah. It's time to find out hey, if Reese has been paying attention. attention. All right, five questions for Reese. Season eight, unbelievable. Can't believe we're here already. Jeez. 30 seconds on the clock, Reese. Yeah. Your time starts after the first question. Question one. Mm. What type of sandwich is Tilk's favourite? Turkey. Correct. The Asgard are trying to rebuild their civilization on what planet? Oh, pass. According to Thor, what is neutronium used for? Uh, human replicators. Correct. What is the name of Thor's new ship? The Daniel Jackson. Correct. According to Daniel, what does the Goa'uld word Orak mean? Oh, God. Orak. Conquer. Incorrect. Unfortunately. Oh, that's a shame. Unspeakable. Yeah, Said right. that in the brief in the briefing room. The oh, Asgard homeworld is Orilla. And the rest of them you got right. But anyway. Reese, your father made you wrong. You <laughs> stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> Every time he says it, it, it doesn't get old because he says wrong like so hard. He hits the wrong. Yeah. Your father made Yeah, we all know. Wrong! We know. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we start fresh next week. Because it's a recording, so yeah. it's the same, yeah. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just doesn't even have to play. It's etched in my f***ing memory. <laughs> <laughs> that is episode 154 of Get Into Gate New Order, but something of a close because next week we don't talk about Stargate SG-1. We talk about Stargate Atlantis. Oh, wow. my Episode God. 1, Rising. You made it. The Lost City. Rises. The Lost City. Hey, Reece, it's called The Lost City. Yeah. No idea what it is. <laughs> <laughs> See, so it didn't ruin anything in the end. Yay! Da, 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 da. Obviously, I'm joking. <laughs> so we will be back <laughs> next week to talk more Stargate, but it will be Stargate Atlantis. Mm. I've got to get used to saying that. I'm gonna. I've been yeah, saying the same thing for three and a half years it's when like, I, I think, next week's episode. I think we've all said at one point we've been talking about Apophis and we've said Anubis or vice versa. Mm. So I think it's going to be that Shit's all over get, again. Yeah, really weird and confusing, especially for me. Uh, and uh, and for Reese as first time viewers mm. of Stargate Atlantis, that'll be next week on Get Into Gate. In the meantime, check out all of our Stargate SG One content so far on your favourite podcasting app. Just search Get Into Gate, a Stargate podcast. Hit us up on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Get in touch, or send us an email as we just heard in the mailbag. Get Into Gate at gmail dot com. And if you'd like to join our new order, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. jump on our Patreon. Absolutely, Patreon dot com forward slash Get Into Gate. Just like. John Coombs, PJC, uh, uh, Jonas Trollson. I mean, Jonas. finally a Jonas I can Patreon. enjoy. Yes. Loving it. Uh, Daniel Smith. Danny. Smitty. 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 Oh, Smitty's not <laughs> bad. Smitty. Smitty. And uh, Logan Wells. Welcome. Wellsy. The Wolverine. The Wolverine. <laughs> He's deep. Oh. He's deep, that guy. How so? Well, Wells. Oh, well, well, well. Oh, I'd like to fall down his well. <laughs> Get wet. He's gaping you know well. What I mean. Deep dark. Well. Yeah. All right, for those watching along, put aside those Stargate SG-1 box sets or Stan accounts or wherever you might be watching and uh, click on over to Stargate Atlantis. Watch Rising, episodes one and two, the pilot episodes of Stargate Atlantis. We'll see you back next week where we can talk about Stargate Atlantis for the very first time. Reese. You excited about starting a whole new other show, buddy? Can't wait. The journey begins <laughs> before this journey has even ended in the first place. Get into geek.